This is a vacuum table. It uses the weight of air to hold your, your work in place while you're machining it. The way it does that is uh, by drawing a vacuum underneath the work, right? We're, we're walking around in almost 15 pounds per square inch of air pressure. So if we can remove that air pressure from one side of a piece of material, then that differential and pressure there can create a lot of pressure per square inch. Um, if on this system with the pump that I'm using and with just air leaking literally through the wood, I'm going to be closer to 10 pounds per square inch of holding power. But on a piece of wood this big, that's going to get you over 1,200 pounds of hold down. So right here I have this gas material. It just sits in between the, 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 the grooves there to help mark off an area where you're drawing vacuum. This has holes all around and each place that I'm not drawing a vacuum there's a plug. So I'm just going to set this board um, over where the gasket is and uh, I'm just going to hold it down and turn on the vacuum. I can feel the board suck down. So right now this is about between 12 and 1300 pounds of force. So I cannot I physically cannot move this. It's on there really good. So this is a great way of holding for when you're not going all the way through, that's an important safety tip. When you go all the way through, you lose all your work holding. So I'm gonna pull this plug to simulate it. I'm just gonna barely push on this and pull the plug. It immediately gets easy to slide, right? So it's super important that when you're holding it down using a, a gasket material like this, that you're careful not to break the vacuum while you're machining it. So uh, V carving, doing any kind of work where you're not cutting all the way through, super easy this way. Let me turn this off. If, um, if you do want to cut all the way through, like if you're using, you know, four quarter stock, you can leave a little bit of an onion skin so that it doesn't break the seal completely. Uh, and then you can, depending on how thin that onion skin is, you can run your finger through it or you can drum sand it on the back side to, you know, get it cleaned up. Um, but know that as the wood gets thinner, it starts to get more porous. So you, you're gradually going to be reducing your hold down as you're doing that. But Anyway, but this, um, there's another way to hold down work on this table without using this gasket method, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you that next. So I'm gonna take off this one piece of gasket and all these plugs. I'm gonna open up all the vacuum so this entire table can pull vacuum. And then we're gonna put this board this board on it. This board is a hard board that's been machined surface, surface on both sides because it gets kind of a seal to it under the compression of manufacturing it. You can see I have some lacquer on the edges here and on the edges to help prevent it from leaking uh, vacuum. And it registers on here with a pin. Now, um, on, so n I have this foam gasket on top of here. This is called a air tile. I think it's called an air tile. And it, uh, it won't allow air to pass through where the tile is, just where the holes are. And it's, it's super cool the way this works. Um, but what it does is it controls the amount of air that's leaking and it lets you concentrate more of your suction on the piece that you're working on. Um, so um, let me turn the air on here and show you how this works. So you want to make sure that this is sealed first. I just heard the pump load up. So now I can't, I can't lift this up. This is uh, a ton of, my hands, I can feel my hands sticking to the table by suction. So that same board, I'm just going to drop it on there and give it a little pressure. And there it is. So right now, this, there's no way, I cannot move this. So this is on there really secure. This is so this is the, the job that I'm going to be doing. And it's, um, it's a finger jointed box. There's the lid with the, uh, a pocket around the edges and these pieces. The smallest piece is, um, it's about an inch and a quarter by five inches long. So the amount of vacuum, when this is completely cut out, the amount of vacuum that's gonna be on there is gonna be about five square inches. So it's about 50 pounds of force, which sounds like enough. But all you have to do is get it to lift up a little bit somewhere and your vacuum's gone. So I'm using a down cut cutter with a, um, a little bit slower feed. And instead of 
hogging through in two passes like I normally would. It's taking four passes. So it's just going to gently work its way through and see if I, with a down cut, I'll leave enough sawdust impacted in the kerf that it might be enough to stay still when I cut it. The reason I want to try this is that I would love to not have to cut tabs off of here. If I put tabs on this, it would work fine on the vacuum table, but I want to see this thing work um, without tabs because that makes it easy to make parts and not a lot of work afterwards to put it together. So that's the plan. All right, so I'm going to turn on the vacuum pump. This is drawn down, right? Okay, and I've already checked the squareness of this to the edge, so I know it's where I want it. I need to uh, find the corner here. So I'm going to do that real quick. I'm going to load this touch probe in there and uh, turn it on. And I'm going to get it close. There we go. I'm going to go into probing and just tell it to always check this first. I'm going to tell it to uh, probe. Okay, so let's, uh, we're going to unload the, uh, the probe, turn it off, and uh, we're going to tell this thing to go to zero, which is where this thing starts. I'm officially nervous now. I really don't know how this is going to go. So we're going to... Uh, Make sure this file is at the beginning and we're just going to hit cycle start and see what happens. So I have it set with the dust hood up, so it's going to be messy, but at least we'll be able to see what it's doing. I, I almost never... I almost never run it without the dust hood. It's just, it's just so messy. So it's referenced off the top of the work. Sorry about the air compressor noise. So the first cut is a pocket um, that's going to be the, the rim of the lid. That gives you an idea how big that lid is. It did it. Wow. <laughs> this is exciting. We'll just let this thing chooch and uh, see what it does. This is it. Oh boy. <laughs> Let this thing finish shutting off. Let's check this out. I'm going to turn off the vacuum. And, uh... <laughs> look at this, how it... It, like, sucks the sawdust down. Oh, look at that. I didn't quite cut all the way through. So I, I ended up onion skinning this thing, which is a work holding method. Yeah, I just need to come in and clean this up. So probably should have cut a little deeper um, to get, make this clean, but so that's kind of cheating. I never really cut it through all the way, so no surprise that it stayed. All right, next time I do this, couple thousands more. So on my first box the sides were a little too short 
so I had to make new sides. So I'm making them here, and you can see how much cleaner this runs um, with the vacuum. There it goes. Ooh. I'm going to ask this thing to move out of the way once it goes up. <laughs> so it's still being sucked down. See, it's just barely. This time I told it to go an extra, a little extra bit, but so you can see this is what has to be sanded off. It just, it's just, it fuzzes off pretty good, but but it did hold it. So that's pretty cool. Vacuum chucking. <laughs>